Hey, everybody, NFT fans, welcome back to the NFT podcast. I am your host, Eugene AK Crypto MC, and I'm here today with my friend from India, he's Prashant Surana Jain. He's the young entrepreneur star from India. He's number one super young achiever under 30 in 2019 by prestigious Hindustan Times, the winner of Forbes Digital, investor and co founder of Indian Blockchain Institute, and Snapper Future Tech. Am I correct, Prashant? And thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much, Eugene. It's my pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, you are absolutely right. I've been in the blockchain and the crypto side of things, both into the enterprise uh, as well as uh, also into, you know, like core crypto. Okay, let's start with uh, your personal story and crypto. How did you get into the blockchain space, what were your incentives and what projects and what roles are you involved and in running right now? Yeah, so uh, my story is pretty interesting, right? Like I come from a traditional, uh, you know, Indian business family and uh, I have been always been entrepreneur through my entire life and uh, uh, I was lucky to, you know, start early. So my first experience was with, you know, internet was back in you know, uh, like 11 years ago when I was 14, right? And that time I started to, you know, do e-commerce things and, you know, working like selling stuff on like eBay and Amazon and things like that. So I used to sell a lot of luxury perfumes, watches and, you know, stuff like that and trying to, you know, bridge that gap of luxury brands in Indian market. While I was doing that, uh, I, you know, I got access to technology. I, you know, kind of started to code uh, a little bit, little bit, you know, started to learn coding and, you know, stuff like that. And while I was building this, my e-commerce uh, business back then, um, I started a company called Snapper Technologies, which was uh, into AI enable image analytics and search engine. So let's say, for example, if I like a picture of your watch, it could like possibly tell me at what price it is available on the internet and, you know, things like that. The idea was to move more towards, you know, social commerce and things like that. And, and, and I knew for sure that the smartphones, mobility and internet is like the future and, you know, artificial intelligence is the way forward. So I started to build this company, you know, uh, in 2012 and then in 2016, we had an exit and it was in 2015 mid, uh, you know, it was my first time I, you know, came across or I was exposed to blockchain and cryptocurrencies, primarily in Hong Kong in one of these conferences called RISE. So, you know, Snapper, we, we were there like presenting at RISE, which is like a very big, you know, tech conference. And then fortunately, you know, a lot of guys back then started to speak about you know, like cryptos, right? And then like they decided to speak about Bitcoins and then, you know, how Bitcoin works and they were speaking about how, you know, this is changing money. And to me, this was mesmerizing, right? Like I have been, you know, into the tech space. I identified about AI, got there, built a company. And then all of a sudden there was something which was changing money. And when you look at how, um, you know, money is being changed, I think, you know, for, for everyone, like the first timers, like, you know, all of us who are like into the crypto and being, you know, with the Bitcoin and not with the other alts, it's really hard to digest that how, you know, someone can actually change money via decentralization, um, you know, public ledgers, peer-to-peer -peer economy and, you know, stuff like that. And I was, you know, pretty amazed and, and you know, I was, I was thinking maybe this is some sort of a scam, right? Like, you know, people like, you know, trying to, you know, some bunch of, you know, like Chinese and Hong Kong guys, like, you know, trying to like scam you and like to say you something about crazy stuff about money. And then that, but something, you know, had an impact in my mind. And I was like, maybe this could be true, you know, like, like something which started at one cent back then, I think Bitcoin was like around 500, $600. And it was on the way to it's like $1,000 because a halving was coming up in 2016. And, and, you know, like I was looking at this price moment and I was like, wow, this is something, you know, like to me, that was like ridiculous. Like, you know, something from a cent going up to $500 and just like, you know, seven, eight years of its time to me, that was like crazy. And, and then what I did was that I started to, you know, look about Bitcoin, you know, while I was there in, you know, Hong Kong and going through this, you know, entrepreneur journey, trying to meet people, understand more about technology and stuff like that. And then when I search about Bitcoin, all I used to find was, you know, use of Bitcoins in some, you know, dark internet and, you know, stuff like that. Like you understand, like, you know, what, what I mean, like back then, I think it was totally different. Like the way people, you know, when you search Bitcoin today, you would find a lot of 
you know, amazing, cool uh, information on how Bitcoin is changing the world rather than, you know, you are like finding that how Bitcoin is used for illicit activities and stuff like that. And I discovered that and I'm like, wow, man, this is this is this is something, you know, like, uh, you know, more private and, you know, things are being used in this way and, you know, stuff like that. And then I had a bit negative impression about it. But but then but something then again, you know, I met the same bunch of guys, you know, uh, in Lang Pai Fong. Uh, you know, during a networking event and, you know, they were like, they asked me again, hey, Prashant, did you check about Bitcoin? I'm like, dude, this is something really, really scam. And like, I really, really don't understand what you're like even talking about, like Bitcoin. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that that coin, which is being used on the dark net, you know, by some people and stuff like that. And then, but but this thing around Bitcoin, it just, just like didn't went away, you know, some things are like, are like bound to happen to you. And you realize that how these things could possibly change your world. And then I came back and then, you know, these guys asked me, you know, go for and study like the coins, you know, white paper, like the OG Satoshi's version of white paper and stuff like that. So I went there, spent a lot of time and then I, I was mesmerized, like how internet could fundamentally, you know, change money. And to me, the way I was looking at Bitcoin was I was looking at uh, something more like, uh, you know, um, not, not money, but like basically how people are like exchanging the ownership of data over the internet, right? Like using this blockchain as a technology. And to me, that was like pretty exciting because coming from a bit from a technical background and also like, you know, a lot of business understanding and, you know, how finances and things like work and, you know, stuff like that. I was able to connect that, how this technology could possibly change the way, you know, data systems and the data structures would work in the, in the in the real world and the internet scenario right and then bitcoin was one of those assets which was used to represent a form of value or a form of money on this technology and this network and i was pretty amazing pretty exciting you know with this concept about deflationary and how people having with you know like the kind of problem it was solving like you know if you look at the world even like till today like you know a lot of people in africa venezuela in spite of having so much you know, uh, resources and stuff like that, still their currencies are like, you know, undervalued and how these centralized societies or these, you know, banks and, you know, these countries for their own political, you know, kind of benefit, try to, you know, surprise these people and, you know, take away a lot of these, uh, you know, financial rights from them and, you know, stuff like that. And that thing about Bitcoin, its purpose to me was really, really exciting. And I'm like, wow, dude, something which can change money, which is decentralized, uh, which has all the, you know, uh, fundamentals of money, like, you know, it's deflationary, you know, the supply gets half, like every four year, there is like a cost of production, like, you know, mining, like how you mine coal, physically, you are like mining gold on the internet. And all these things was like really, really exciting and cool to me. And then finally, what I ended up like, basically just before, uh, you know, uh, at the peak, the Bitcoin went like up to $1,000 just before it's halving. So after, you know, a few weeks of my research and, you know, it's time to speak around people, I ended up putting everything I've got into Bitcoins. And and then right after 2016, I, it crashed and it went up to like $150, $200, right? And that was like, I was like, dude, I just lost 80% of my own you know, net worth and, you know, what I've done, am I gambling and, you know, all of these uh you know, questions come in your mind when you become like a tourist in the space and you get with a greed factor. And then you realize that, oh, okay, you know, maybe the purpose of getting into this is like something different. It's not greed. And and then, you know, I have been wondering that how it is possible and, you know, all of that. And then I went to my dad and he told me that this is what has happened. And, you know, this is what the thing is, what should I do? And my dad told me like, you know, if you believe in it, just go for it. And he gave me and lent me some more additional capital to invest into Bitcoins. And I bought more Bitcoins, you know, way back at like $250, $300. And and then I got like more than heavily invested, you know, that spark of like hot playing and then that spark that, okay, you know, like, I don't care. I mean, if there's like even a 1% probability that even this thing could change the world, I think, you know, I should go for it, like, you know. And, and then that's how my journey with Bitcoin started. And then, you know, uh, I realized its potential about blockchain as a technology and how it could use to solve various problems in India, right? Like, I mean, if you look at India, India has like a lot of problems, like, you know, primarily around 
verification of you know ownership so anything related to ownership i think you can use this technology to possibly solve it and prove ownership in like real time without any manipulations and stuff like that so you know i like in 2017 i you know started back snapper uh, future tech again which is an enterprise blockchain company and we have been one of the pioneers in the space right like uh, you know our cto is leading the hyperledger india chapter we are con- actively contributing to hyperledger side of things and stuff like that right so why this crypto thing was you know during this entire time was in this uh, you know unregulated and you know this legal certainty was happening though i was you know at like promoting crypto and like being personally invested into this but you know from my entrepreneurial perspective i was more focused in building blockchain and you know building more products and solutions like for more for businesses and enterprise because this is what you know my core background and my strengths been into like you know designing uh, you know products which will solve these processes and you know stuff like that and then we you know happened to work with governments in india like we worked with andhra pradesh government we were the first company in india to you know publish blockchain uh, land based land records and you know kind of trying to mainstream blockchain in um you know government uh, use cases and like blockchain for public service deliveries and that's how you know snapper as a startup was started in 2017 uh, uh we built a lot of enterprise gate products contributed to hyperledger and personally i have been also you know been actively been investing and promoting a lot of these you know early stage uh, crypto projects uh, crypto you know startups and trying to you know be part of this you know uh, economy so this is how you know my journey started in this space and then while we were like kind of you know growing uh, you know across uh, you know like trying to invest into all these emerging and cutting edge technologies like ai blockchain cloud big data iot and stuff like that we realized that okay you know blockchain could form this you know backbone of your like entire data structure and your data economy whereas crypto could be those asset which could basically you know fuel this economy right like crypto could be like the fuel of you know running these all these use cases because it's mechanisms of like rewarding people instead of incentivization and stuff like that is like really really cool and uh, and then you know we also realize that okay you know people needs to be educated and you know there there is like a tremendous potential in the job market and stuff like that we also started indian blockchain institute the whole idea with indian blockchain institute is that like you know we want to take blockchain as a technology in development like mainstream like people you know learn java people would learn a lot of other fundamental languages but you know learning blockchain after you learn them would you know would get a lot of more people into this open source ecosystem open source uh, you know community and you know would help to drive innovation further and based on that practice we established in your indian blockchain institute where we work with enterprises colleges governments like everyone in an ecosystem trying to you know educate them about blockchain about crypto assets and you know uh, stuff like that So this is my journey about you know crypto and you know blockchain, but yeah, like uh, but yeah, it's really a cool one, and and I'm really glad and you know lucky to be be like such early uh, both from um, you know technological perspective and also from investment perspective. This is an amazing story. You're an amazing storyteller. Love to listen to you. To ask you, it's great to have you on my show. But by the way, do you remember that we met with you first time? in Russia St Petersburg in the cold autumn on October 2 2019 it was super cold i'm curious was it your first visit to russia and what was your impressions about russia how did you <laughs> feel there so uh i think russia has been like a mesmerizing place in specifically um you know uh, everything i mean it's naturally beauty people around and everything i mean you know i could actually feel like very homely i really enjoyed my you know time with uh, at russia and specifically when you have you know like combined that natural beauty with so many pretty girls around i think that's like, like the best uh, combination but you know keeping all those jokes aside you know i happened to had a chance to like kind of you know connect with you and then we ended up connecting on facebook kind of you know following each other works and the stuff you have been doing with the trust wallet and like you know other things like like you guys are like proper you know ogs like you know not like the guys like who try to you know show off that okay you know i have got this nfts i have got that etc etc but trying to you know kind of build up uh, some something around so i think my journey was like completely life changing one of those most memorable times met really good friends and i'm still keeping in touch with them so no doubts about that 
Definitely, it was great time. But our main goal in the podcast was to explore the NFT realm and your personal vision about NFT was going on all the world is in the hive. I'm curious, how did you get your first exposure with NFTs? How to explain what is NFT, especially for newcomers, new buy in crypto without to understand what's going on? And you were uh, any thoughts about why did we have NFT hype in the digital art in 2020, 2021? What is similar? as a ICO hype in 20, uh, 2017. Any thoughts? Give us your, your vision, your opinion about that. Yeah, see, uh, okay. So my first thing or my first comment here would be that I think COVID has changed uh, a lot of things. The way we look at, you know, economy, the way we look at collectibles, the way we look at freedom, right? And then I think, uh, with COVID, like, you know, the kind of restrictions we have been put into and like, thanks to like internet and all the screens and the technological gadgets we have, I think uh, consumerism and, you know, like the, I think our digital consumption uh, has increased exponentially more. And, and, and then, you know, why this is increasing, there are so many other things to, you know, kind of ex be explored. So uh, if, if, you, if I ask you about NFTs, the good thing about NFTs is that like, it's like an ocean of, uh, you know, human imagination put into blockchain, right? Like, I mean, you could find anything and, you know, everything. Uh, more than that, you know, uh, of course, like the valuations and in, in, in the pricings and stuff like that is a factor which is driving. But the way I would look at NFTs is that, like, you know, possibilities uh, of, you know, storing, you know, human arts, the digital, you know, imagination onto the blockchain and making it immutable is like more and more exciting, right? I mean, once you put it on a blockchain, it's there forever, right? So maybe like, you know, after like hundreds of thousands of years, when, when this, you know, possibly the civilization would possibly, you know, grow, collapse, or we become multi-planet species, this data on a blockchain would serve uh, a sort of imagination to the next generation on how you know, like human societies, human imagination and arts and everything, uh, uh, you know, possibly existed. So this is one way, you know, how the way I look at NFTs. And I, I was lucky, I was also lucky enough to get into NFTs like back in like 2018, because, uh, because you know, in 2017 and actually in 2016, 2015, mid, I also got exposure about Ethereum while I was, you know, studying a bit like that. And when I went through Ethereum's roadmap and there was something called ERC721 tokens, and, you know, understood that and realized that, okay, you know, one can like present uh, fundamental digital, you know, ownerships, you know, like the arts and this space. I think the bigger market, which I'm looking at and I'm excited about this tokenization of assets, right? Like you could use uh, you know, NFTs and non-fungible tokens to represent a uh, Euro fraction real estate to represent your like ownership in you know new upcoming movies and you know stuff like that. So I think for the digital community, it could be like raising money, collecting money, and at the same time for like you know people like you know people all around the world want to be like uh, you know like arts and culture, which were like you know only access to like a limited. Uh, uh, you know, number of people like, you know, traditionally, right, because possibly if you have to get into the space, you may need to, you know, end up putting more money, which you don't have, right, let's say, if I want to produce a movie, or if I want to take an ownership in some of these upcoming movies, right, we people with those financial resources and connects with um, these businesses can actually reach out to their community, you know, like artists can reach out to their fans and, you know, ask them to invest in their projects, you know, alongside them. And the good part about fans is that like, you know, they, they don't have to, uh, you know, kind of go through the tedious processes of, you know, like, you know, of, you know, managing the ownership, managing their rights and etc. And you have blockchain to take care of that. So I see that, you know, uh, NF NFTs, apart from the digital arts, would like explode uh, in the world of tokenization, because I think in like next decade, we are looking at everything to be, you know, kind of like tokenized, like from your like investments, like from your securities to your gold, to your houses, to your like resorts, entertainment, like everything would be tokenized in some way or the other. And, and I think we are looking at like multi-trillion dollars. So I think if you talk, talk to me about the upside, I think for me, the upside is like huge. And, and, and I think even in the digital art space, right? Like, like 
uh, you know, yes, right now, like there is everyone is jumping into it and talking about NFTs and, you know, things like that. But I feel that this will somewhere will, you know, meet the, uh, um, you know, like the demand uh, and the like, you know, supply work and, uh, you know, demand and the supply. And, and, and I think that they will kind of expand into other use cases in other areas and stuff like that. Right. And, and the good thing is that why uh, uh, additionally NFTs uh, is like picking up, uh, you know, you could like, you know, just to give a quick comparison, you know, compared to your traditional arts and stuff like that, right? So let's say today I want to go and buy like a Picasso's painting. So when I want to buy, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to go and like verify and, you know, checks, authentic checks, whether this particular art piece is authentic or not like. And this is the first check I do. And, and, and in this entire process, I would just end up, you know, spending a lot of money, a lot of resources, a lot of time. And still chances are that I might, you know, end up buying something fake or, you know, something like that, right? And, and this problem is solved by NFTs because on the blockchain, they can be like, you know, um, there is like originality, there is authentication and this entire technology and this NFTs just make sure that, okay, whatever you're buying, you're buying like authentic, you're buying real. So when you're buying it from the verified users and the verified sellers or the verified profile, your time, which you spend and the resources and, you know, making sure that this particular work is authentic gets reduced drastically to a large extent so this is the first problem about authentication which nfts are solving and which you know arts in the traditional or the physical world wouldn't solve it second thing is like portability and storage right like imagine like i'm a you know great collector right? but if i have to like collect physical paintings i have to like you know buy a huge space store them make sure they are not you know uh, make sure make make it you know prevent it like from hackers and from bad actors by insurances maintain them so uh like you know realistically there is very high cost of ownership associated with such high value items like traditionally right like the maintenance cost but with the wallets and stuff like that and if you know how you need to manage your keys you can carry all of your collection just in your pocket and i think that is like pretty cool because because you could just, you know, make sure that, you know, you are always carrying your ownership and you don't have to, you know, kind of worry that, okay, you might lose it some in some natural calamity, in some fire, in some theft, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this is, this solves a huge problem from a collector and, and from a technical standpoint of view. And I think a lot of people are realizing the power of portability, the power of, you know, carrying your passion, like in your uh, pockets, right? Like I could actually show them anywhere. I could, you know, carry it anywhere. And I think it makes me very comfortable when I talk about these such large value items. The third exciting thing about uh, NFTs is like it's business models. Uh, and I think it's business models um, around intellectual property. One can pretty much, you know, transfer its ownership in real time. So imagine like traditionally, if I have to sell or buy any of these paintings or assets, the volume of the transaction is huge. Uh, the, you know, commissions and stuff like that and the reliability on this entire middleman is also huge at the same time, right? But, and, and also it's very difficult to kind of you know, find buyers of these, uh, you know, items because the buyer would also fundamentally go through the same process as I went through before I buying it, right? So with this blockchain and this, you know, non fungibility I could possibly, you know, transfer the ownership of these assets instantly. So which means that any other asset, which is like, you know, which has a potential to be like, you know, traded, like, you know, and change hands very frequently, right? Like the ownership would be transferred so fast. You could expect like huge community and the huge volumes to coming in right like let's say for example stocks you see why people would speculate so much on stocks or so much on bitcoins and you know so much on ethereum because the ownership of these assets would just like change real real fast so the people who want to like kind of you know speculate like a short-term investor or a long-term investor can you know get into it and he he, he can be assured that okay he has like a worldwide marketplace where he can go and sell its arts instantly and the settlement and everything is taken care of by smart contracts so to me you know it is solving all these big problems around accountability ownership trust and transactions and i think that's what makes uh, nft like really cool. and that's that's what i'm more excited about yeah great answer great answer i love it i love it so uh nowadays as you know we we'll have the next use cases of general of use cases of nfts they are collectibles they are digital art 
they are gaming and metaverses, perhaps the tickets on events, one huge topic. How do you see the potential use cases of NFT or what purposes they will be likely used for in the near future as an entrepreneur? So, uh, yeah, correct. So as I mentioned to you about that, the biggest use case of the NFTs uh, would be around tokenization. So by tokenization, I would say tokenization of real estate. People could possibly own a fraction of real estates, you know, around that. The second is like your traditional security. So all of your debentures, rights, or all your like real world stocks can potentially be represented on NFTs and can be securitized it like we can securitize it. Um, so all these, uh, you know, like the public assets, like private assets, like including gold, silver, uh, petroleum, like we can think about any of these assets and that could possibly be on a blockchain and NFTs can possibly do that. The third uh, uh, exciting use case, which I'm really excited about is ownership of like IP rights and the ownership, right? In a traditional world, like, you know, we issue a lot of these patents, a lot of these trademarks and stuff like that. And the ownership of and the change of hands at this like of these things at a global level is 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 uh, uh, really a very complicated process right and they could you know potentially change the way people change ownership of ips and that is also very exciting so let it be like a music industry let it be uh, uh you know um you know like any any industry where you have anywhere like you can think of content creation you can possibly think of plugging in nfts uh, you know as a use case as part of your uh, you know business models and value more value models right so this is the third use case which i am seeing like possibly would go mainstream the other use cases would be you know like funding like raising money so a lot of these content creators artists star would be able to you know raise money would be able to offer ownership to their fans maybe through the fan tokens or, or, or many or any of their, you know, um, tokens, right? Like, you know, NFTs and the, that ownership would represent or that token can represent a certain rights or ownership, right? So uh, I think this is also pretty exciting because it is enabling everyone to, you know, participate uh, uh, in their things or, or, or uh, things about which they are passionate about and which was not, you know, possible before. And, and, and also for the artists, for the stars, for the talents, it's like one of those amazing ways of, you know, connecting with your fans, engaging them, not only through your content, but, but, uh, but also, uh, you know, with some financial incentive or you know intro among them so these are the few use cases and i think like nfts would be like everywhere like everything the all the real world assets would be tokenized tomorrow so any of like nfts use cases i think is like infinite and, and it's just going to grow uh from here yeah i totally agree totally agree with you uh, by the way i was the saying i have no idea what's going on in India, due to blockchain regulation in general and regarding NFT, you may explain uh, how the blockchain technology or blockchain phenomena, artifacts and activity around blockchain is regulated or is going to be regulated in India. And regarding NFTs, do you maybe expect that the uh, Indian government will create a specific legal frameworks for NFT and theoretically speaking in near future? Any thoughts? Yeah, sure. So uh, from Indian perspective, uh, uh, right, like basically what's been going on is that uh, uh, first of all, there is requirement of a clear definition on how crypto an asset. So uh, India, uh, you know, as it's per central bank guidelines and as per its constitution and stuff like that, uh, the only currency which could, you know, be possibly used for goods and services in India would be Indian rupee. So crypto assets like Bitcoins and you know, other assets would be more treated like a commodity or I'm doubtful that is open uh, and specifically the central bank is open, allowing people to use it as a form of currency. Uh, and I think from their perspective or from regular perspective, they are right to a lot of extent because uh, Indian market, Indian economy and Indian capitalism uh, is a little bit different when we compare it or look at it uh, with the rest of the world. Uh, so, but, but we're all like, you know, the trading of crypto assets, investing into them, you know, storing into them, like buying and selling of these assets would be permanent. And, and recently, even the central bank, the RBI also you know, issued circular to all the banks stating that they cannot you know, stop any uh, investor or any user from transacting cryptocurrencies within their own bank, because this is basically the violation of uh, basic fundamental rights in India 
which was, uh, you know, from a Supreme Court. So which states that any citizen is, in India is free to carry out any profession, any law or any business in respect of his religion, his gender and, you know, his economic status. It's everybody's right. And, you know, banning of cryptocurrencies is basically banning of first fundamental rights of not letting citizens to trade and invest freely. Um, and I don't think, uh, you know, this is going to happen and India is going to have a very, um, you know, collaborative approach, very calibrative approach. And, and I think they will be like open for a lot of these use cases to evolve. Uh, and when we talk about NFTs, uh, I would say that, um, you know, uh, government is trying to put in like a basic taxation structure in place, like, you know, GSTs and the VAT, which would, uh, which already applies in a traditional world to any of these arts and, you know, stuff like that. So I'm assuming that the same laws and the regulations would also apply to these, uh, you know, new business models. Uh, however, we are waiting for more clarity because the market is still at an early stage and there's like a very rapid... Uh, you know, uh, development, uh, which is actually happening in the space from the community perspective, from the technological uh, uh, perspective and, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I think we need more progressive laws. Uh, we are still in the early days. And then I think um, India will possibly be like a blockchain capital or the hub of the world. Totally agree. Sounds very, very interesting. Actually, I'm seeing India to watch by my own eyes. All your friends, all your peers, all my peers are watching right now this video, and they are not in NFT space, and we are experienced. They are not, and they are waiting. They, uh, they have a question. Please, Prashant, suggest us the first baby steps to the NFT you suggest us to do for deep dive into this rail. We find this topic interesting, but we need to practice steps. Suggest with your recommendation what to do to connect with the NFT realm. Yeah, great. So when you look about NFTs, as I've been always been saying, there are two angles of looking at it. One is like looking at NFTs from a security sign point of view, whether that NFT represent any asset in the real world. And the other is the complete digital side of things. So I think we are already aware on how we evaluate assets in the traditional world, right? Like, so I would just talk about how to evaluate NFTs purely in a blockchain and digital world. Right. So NFTs like is all about like building and like gaming and more interactive and everything which has been happening over the digital world. Like you were like basically owning something, uh, ownership in a digital world and, and the entire resources, what you're spending is like a time, energy, efforts, your resources into building something. So when you're starting, just don't go by its hype. First, learn and understand about the things which you are passionate about. Try to make a collection of things. So let's say, for example, like, you know, I'm passionate about sneakers. So I would just collect stuff, uh, you know, about sneakers. And I would, you know, look at a lot of these videos on, you know, what are the good marketplaces to buy? What are the good artists? I would go check their Instagram profiles, Twitter profiles. I would look at things. I would try to, you know, get into a perspective of more, uh, artistic kind of a stuff. So the first and the most important thing is you need to discover your uh, uh, passion and the things about which you are excited about. And once you do that, I think you can just go all over the internet and try to study more. And whenever you're buying, just make sure that you're buying stuff, which is like verified, uh, you know, go and check for like page history, check how many people are watching it, how many people have bought it and sold it. Uh, and all these information would uh, possibly give you a, a decent idea on how that particular item is trading and how it's going to go. Now, from a pers from an investor's perspective, there are again two perspectives. One is like a trader who would just buy it and sell it at a premium and then exit. And one is like a hodler who is collecting it from a um, you know, longer term uh, perspective. So if you're just a trader, I think you would get into, uh, uh, you know, items and the products, which is like has very high demand. And I think they're already trading at premium, something like NFTs from like crypto pounds uh, and, you know, monkey apes and you know, stuff like that, right? Uh, which has been there and it has a community and stuff like that. So you would just find a buyer who is like interested to buy. But if you're like trying to make a collection, you need to, you know, build a story around why you're collecting a particular NFT. So if you're excited about sneaker, you would possibly end up, you know, collecting all of those eight forces one. And so you, so you would like need to, you know, also know the most important thing and how to managing your wallets, right? Because most of the NFTs are like stored over MetaMask and you need to make sure that you don't connect your MetaMask with um, any of these uh, websites, which is like malicious. So whenever you're going, you just go and, you know, check their 
telegram twitter handles try to go through the comments what people are saying um, we don't review them on 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 trust pilot and if you want to go and do a further verification around it right like you can go and so review the smart contracts from so they can check that security status and stuff like that and, and then 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 you know uh, even from people who are involved in this from a collection or monetary perspective i think there is a huge huge upside as 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 and when the space grows and when more and more people you know starts coming into this because the gamification angle of it is like really cool so you you possibly never know that when any of your like nfts whatever you're holding could possibly become some you know high profile or some high really cool game tomorrow so let's say for example pokemon nfts right like who knows that your pokemon nfts could possibly become some really cool games and then you have you know polychain stuff like that so i would say this is more about uh, you know getting into perspective discovering the things which you really like which you really love and then you know diving it into like you know day in and day out and it's like really really addictive i'd right? like you know just ask me because earlier i wasn't really a fan of this but once i got hang of like polychain monsters i am like just all over it like every single day so so you would just like you know kind of discover the things which you love about this market the gamification factor of it and then you could like slowly build your portfolio well excellent recommendation super detailed thank you very much prashant and finally how what is the best way to follow you on the internet on social media and on what upcoming events if you are planning to speak uh, somebody may meet you live Yeah so I'm speaking at one of the events uh, on 29th of August uh, I'm talking about how bitcoin is changing the world and bitcoin is changing finance uh so this is why next up I'm an event and if if you want to reach out to me you can on instagram you can look for bitcoin man india you would find me as prashant surana jain you can google me up as prashant surana jain p r a s h a n t space s u r a n a space j a i n and you would find a lot of handles you would find my linkedin if you want to reach out to me for any business or anything professional you can link out to me on linkedin twitter you can also reach out to me at bitcoin man india and i'm always available and uh, you can also possibly email me and you know connect me on all these platforms and i would love to re- speak with you thank you very much thank you very much prashan this has been a very interesting extremely interesting talk to you ladies and gentlemen you were listening and watching to the nifty podcast that is supported by the nifty protocol please like share subscribe comment and hit the bell button for not missing the future episodes we're publishing daily the bitcoin indian man prashant sarana chain the entrepreneur blockchain entrepreneur from india and eugene kept the mc were with you thank you for listening and watching see you in the next episodes of the nifty podcast bye bye Yeah thank you so much bye guys